Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg here in Las Vegas. Hank, um, we're moving forward without football. We got a lot of basketball going on. We got golf. Whoa, uh, without football? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I guess There's football this weekend. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. What do you think? You think that you think that legal catch on? Yes. Really? I think they will. Well managed. They got money behind them. Uh, Luck is the uh, commissioner. Uh, they're getting good publicity. They got a contract with ABC. They're going to be on television this weekend, and uh, they've got good coaching. Stoops is the coach in Dallas. Uh, Tressman is coaching the team in Tampa, uh, and they're going to have betting. And they got a national television contract, and they got some decent players, and the. They'll do well. People want football. They have we got have, some interesting rules too. They're going to try. Like what? Uh, they're going to be able to throw two forward passes on a play. Really? Wow! Wow! Well, I you know for me, I hope I hope it does. And by the by the way, they got I mean, three choices on ex, on extra points too. Now, explain. What do you mean? They have three different choices on extra points. They can either kick or they can go for it, you know, from two yards out or they can go further back uh, and try a third way for three points. Wow. Innovative, innovative stuff. Let's hope it catches on. Yep. We've seen this before. The USFL, of course, was the biggest one. That was... 30 years ago. Um, then we've had a couple of other efforts. At, and for one reason or another, they just haven't made it. It would be, it would, it would be great if they could, um, well, well people are going to bet on it. And, uh, they are in major markets and they've got good stadiums. I mean, they're going to play in Dallas. They're in St. Louis. They're in LA. They're in Tampa. Um, They've got, uh, you know, it's it's uh, going to get some attention, and uh, and Oliver Luck is the commissioner, and um, they've got some smart people behind. Vince McMahon owns one of the teams, and you know he'll put money into it. He sure, so he sure will. They're, they're well they're well financed, and they you know they had a draft. Uh, uh, in uh, Houston, I think it was in Houston uh, about two mo- a month and a half ago, and uh, they've got pretty good coaching staffs, uh, and they've uh, done a lot of work. And they've got, uh, for example, the T- Tampa team has a quarterback who played for Georgia. Uh, the uh, St. Louis team has a quarterback who played for Mississippi State who had a tryout with Denver. Um, so they've got, uh, who they're going to showcase some of these guys and a lot of these players are hoping they play well enough that they get picked up by the NFL and the NFL is interested in watching these teams. Well, yeah, they can always find some talent. That's, uh, that's for certain. Uh, you remember, of course, we both remember the USFL and how that took off and, they what did they have like eight markets and they had some big cities and they had a lot of big players but they overpaid them and they couldn't. They did very well. Uh, they uh, Donald Trump ruined that league uh, and uh, he they, they had a team in New Jersey and he messed that up and they had a real good owner in Tampa uh, who they put together a great franchise there. Dick Vermeil was the coach in Philadelphia. And the guy who was the general manager there went on to be the GM in Kansas City. They had a great franchise in Philadelphia. They had some real good, some real good clubs. That that, that, that league ended what nineteen eighty six something like that. No, whatever. Yeah. And who was the uh, who was the owner of the um, the LA franchise? Because he he started paying a lot of money, just like Trump did, paying too much money to. Play. Well, they had they had they had Steve Young. As a quarterback, uh, I went to their opening game because uh, Wayne Newton uh, was the entertainment at halftime, and uh, 
he was friendly with the owner and uh, I was in Las Vegas at the time and I flew over with the Wayne's band on a private plane and went to that game. Wow. And, uh, yeah, but uh, they had a nice team in L.A. and they had 35,000 people wow. showed up for the game, but most of the people left after the halftime show. Oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, um, what we have today is we have a we have the uh, games tomorrow and Sunday in the XFL, and we've got a lot of college basketball tonight, tomorrow, Sunday. And no, the, not tonight. Uh, tonight's schedule is uh, not very good. It's mostly Ivy League games. Yesterday, last night was uh, pretty decent. A lot of West Coast teams were playing. Uh, and they had some pretty good games. Uh, I had Southern Cal against Arizona because Arizona just can't finish. Very overrated team. And uh, Southern Cal was down 20 some odd points, almost came back and beat them. Wow. Uh, so uh, I had uh, I had that game and I had Cincinnati, which I told you about already. And uh, it was uh, Utah played Stanford last night. That was a pick em game. And uh, um, Arizona State is playing better right now. Uh, and they uh, beat UCLA pretty easily. Yeah, they did. Um, we do have uh, one... But tonight's schedule, tonight's schedule is terrible. We do have one matchup, Maryland and Illinois. That's a big... They're two uh, rated teams, ranked teams, I should say. That is uh, two very uh, two teams that you can't count on, <laughs> except for the Big Ten team. Home teams have done pretty well this year in covering the spreads, but um, there's a couple. Big Ten teams are very unreliable. They can't hold the lead. They have tremendous shooting droughts. Uh, the Maryland coach is pretty good, but um, I. Uh, I don't like Big Ten basketball. None of those teams are any good. Even Michigan State, who plays Michigan this weekend, and Michigan is playing better right now. That game interests me a little bit. But uh, I stay away from Big Ten basketball now. I learned from watching it that uh, the, the teams can't score. It's it's a wide open uh, it's a wide open uh, looking field for the. NCAA, I mean, there's really... Who do you think's the best team out there? Best top three or four teams? Uh, I don't think that there are very many good teams in that conference right now. I'm, I'm, and, I, I, and I don't think that there should be more than three teams going to the tournament. Michigan State will go, of course, because Izzo uh, will you know, put together a decent team as, as they get closer to the finish. Iowa has a nice team. They'll go. Um, Minnesota is playing pretty well right now. Uh, uh, Richard Patino is doing a nice coaching job there. Um, Northwestern has uh, been uh, competitive, but I don't think they're a conference team. I, I just those are the only three teams right now that I like. How, uh, what, uh, what I would like, what, uh, what I meant to ask is, what team? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you the team that's. That's good right now is uh, Rutgers. Rutgers is playing very they, well. They, they 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 beat everybody. How about a team like Dayton? Do you think they could go far? Well, they're not a Big Ten team. No, I, but well, Dayton's I, good. <laughs> yeah, Dayton can score, and uh, they're uh, they're playing very well right now. They, they can run and they can score. You got you got Dayton, you got Rutgers, you got Gonzaga, of course, play, you know, always up there, and then you got Baylor. Uh, these are well. Gonzaga is probably the number one team in the country right now. Um, anybody, anybody else from other leagues around the country, or any dark horses that you like? Well, uh, the ACC is down this year. There's only right now they uh, Lenardi. He's only got four ACC teams going to into the postseason. Um, and uh, Duke is one of them. And, um, of course, and I don't know about Virginia, but uh, they, uh, you know, uh, uh, Louisville, 
is good. Um, but uh, I don't know about the, you know, North, oh, I'll tell you, Florida State's got a very good club. What do you think about LSU? They're good. They're okay. That conference has got a lot of good teams right now. LSU is playing Auburn uh, tomorrow, and you'll find out a little more about LSU in that game. Auburn has bounced back pretty strong. They had a they had a tough game last week, but they came through and they won against Kentucky. Um, and they had a and Kentucky's good, uh, but Calipari had a great comment about Auburn. Auburn shot forty four free throws Whoa. in that game. Whoa. And they and they asked uh, <laughs> and they asked him, him about that game, and he said they just rebound and they go, and that's what Auburn's all about. How and real do you think? Top. How real do you think San Diego State is? Uh, I'm not wild about that conference, but they've had a very good season. They've only lost one game, I think. Um, well, it's going to be fun. I, you know, when we get into the conference play, both, you know, conference play and the final 64, 68, I should say, it sh- there should be a lot of dogs standing up because there's really no power, not very many power teams. It should be very, well, com- very competitive. I, you know, I, you know, I mean, talking about Duke for the moment, uh, Duke the other day against Boston College, was one for 15 from three points. Whoa. I mean, they just, they don't shoot very well at times. So they go ice cold. And they don't have a lot of, a lot of guys they can count on, you know, aside from the big man, uh, you know, at, at center. Uh, and they keep going to him. Jones is okay. Uh, but they don't have the uh, scoring threats that they normally have. But they're averaging 82 points a game, but they go one for 15, and they can't shoot fouls. They're terrible at the free throw line. Although they had 44 free throws, as I said, against Kentucky. Then they go out the next night against Boston College, which may have been a look ahead for Carolina. Now Carolina has lost their their top three-point shooter, uh, and uh, he's, he's out for this. Um, so they've now got three starters who are out and they're having a rough, rough year, but this is Duke. And if you go back in the last 10 years, the highest margin of victory in this series is eight points. I don't know what the number is. I, t- I talked to Chuck Esposito. He thought it would be around nine or 10 points. If it's, if it's nine, if it's over eight, eight and a half points, I don't think I would give the points with Duke because they're not covering a lot lately. And the other thing with Duke is uh, um, with this series, they have now played 100 times. This is an amazing stat. Each team has won 50 games, and the total points exactly is dead same. even. That, that Dead even after 100 games. The, odd, the odds of that have to be like billions to one. That, that's incredible. Yeah. We do have some big games on Saturday. Um, some big, big ranked teams. Louisville is going to host Virginia. That will be interesting. Um, Virginia's not that good this year. Yeah, but they the kind of team that can pull an upset. You know, they with the, they're not that good. No, they're not what they were last year. You can't Seton, score. Seton Hall and Villanova are going to play. That's going to be a that's big a big game. game. Seton Hall and then Villanova and. That's a big game. Kansas TCU, uh, LSU Auburn is a very big game uh, for both teams. Texas Tech Texas is a big game. Yes, Texas is. Tech is playing much better lately. Uh, and Duke Carolina. Yeah, and West. You know, West Virginia has been spoken by a lot of people as a as a real dark horse. Now they're very young, but they're eighteen and four on the season. So they're, they're yeah. Well, they were very highly ranked. But uh, they, they've uh, hit a couple of potholes lately because uh, they don't score consistently. But they're very good defensively, and they, they keep scores down. Yes, they do. 
It's going to be an interesting couple of months. And for, you know, I'm, I don't know, for some reason, and I, I really don't have a great track record in the NBA till it gets to the playoffs. And I've always done really well in the playoffs, but the regular season, I've kind of shied away from over the years. But for some crazy reason this year, I'm actually doing well in the NBA. It, it's, uh, well, it's been very predictable. Uh, you know, it's, uh, New Orleans now has Zion and, uh, they're a much better team with him in there. Last night they beat Chicago. Milwaukee is playing extremely well. They, Milwaukee may be the best team in the league right now. Um, uh, along with the Clippers. Although the Lakers, eh, I'm not wild about the Lakers right now. Although, you know, they're playing. They've had a couple of big games last week. Portland is a team that has uh, been good at home lately, but they're one game below 500. And if the season ended today, they wouldn't be in the playoffs. And yet they've got a couple of guys who can really score. Well, Lillard, Lillard has been absolutely insane lately. They're in a little bit of a fatigue issue right now because they played those four straight games on the road, came home for one and then back on the road again tonight. Um, and you know the fatigue is going to start to. They need some help. Um, besides those two guards getting all the points, they need some help. And um, they're an exciting team to watch, but it's hard to win when you just get all your points from two guys. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, Houston. Houston is an interesting team. Uh, you know, they had a big night last night, and. Uh, they, uh, you know, it's it's funny, you know, talk about that team. Harden uh, is, uh, you know, of course, their leader. And then they've got the guy that, you know, that they picked up uh, uh, this year, who uh, Colin Coward hates. Westbrook. And he said he's a big mistake, and he only scored 48 points last night. <laughs> uh West, Westbrook is a unique basketball player. He is, um, he's absolutely impossible to guard, but his shooting percentage from the outside is not very good, and that's what probably holds him back. But he is, um, he's impossible to stop. He goes to the rim better than just about anybody. He's, uh, he's tough. That's a, you know, they've gone small too. They're only, their tallest guy they're playing is six foot seven. They're, they've gone small. They play total small ball. Throw up forty to fifty three point shots every game. Today is the uh, opening day for uh, Kentucky Derby futures, uh, except in Nevada, where they are now not accepting Churchill Downs or, or anything owned by Churchill Downs. Uh, because of the uh, takeout argument that's going on. So, uh, unfortunately, right now, if they ran the Kentucky Derby tomorrow, you wouldn't be able to bet it in Nevada. Wow. So that's back on, that uh, feud. And uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, Churchill wants a big cut of the uh, takeout, and the uh, Nevada uh, sports books won't give it to him. Good for them. So, anyway... Uh, but uh, there's a horse that's owned by the uh, group that uh, had Smarty Jones uh, out of Saratoga Springs, that same group. Um, um, Tis the Law is the name of the horse, who won the uh, Holy Bull last week at uh, Gulfstream. And this horse is uh, probably not going to run in the Florida Derby. He's going to go elsewhere. Uh, and this horse ran a heck of a race. He looked like he... Uh, he, uh, had an, he did not have the easiest of trips, and yet once he took over that race, he really took off. He's a very nice horse. He's a gelding. Uh, but he's probably going to open as the eight to one favorite in the, uh, in the winter book. Baffert has two horses. Uh, one of them, uh, Van Dyke said it was his best two year old. He's got another one, uh, who, uh, won the, uh, the, the Robert Lewis stakes, uh, who's a real grinder. Those, and he's got three other three, three year olds. But his next horse, uh, 
next his next race uh, is not until March seventh. So I have to wait and see how the Baffert horse do. But he's loaded. And then there's the horse in uh, who won the Lecomte to uh, Mark Cassie trains. Uh, I think his name is Embolden. But anyway, um, there was some talk that he was going to go to Dubai and race there, but now Cassie is going to keep him here and train him up to the Derby. He likes him that much. Yeah, that was a totally wide trip the whole way, and he won going away. He was very impressive. Wow. Hank, you're full of great information. Do you ever sleep or just uh, stay up all day and night studying? Because... Well, uh, I got a call from CBS telling me they wanted me to do some uh, a little derby talk today for opening day of the, of wow. the uh, winter book around the country. Okay. So uh, I had to do some work on that. And it sounds like you did. <laughs> um, anything else you want to cover this week before we sign off for the week? No. What did you, any, any... Unless you want to talk Rush Limbaugh getting a medal of freedom. Well, if you have, a, if you have an opinion, go ahead, tell me. One of the most divisive people in the history of radio. We, you know, we don't usually talk very much politics on here, but he definitely is um, a conservative and... Uh, the country. I don't have a problem with that, but the, it's the things he says about people. Uh, but uh, that's the way it is now. It's uh, you know it's it's very it's a very divided country. I wish the hell we'd get our act together and start cooperating. But, you know. Democrats, Republicans, I like just everybody get on the same page and just start working for America. I mean, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter to me. It's just we need to come together as a nation. And uh, yep. I, I don't know how to do it. I really don't. I have no idea. I stick with what I know, and that's sports. And the, the politic thing is, is just absolutely, it's a real mess today. I'm, I'm sure it's been a mess before. I mean, I remember back in the Vietnam days, because we're both old enough to remember that stuff, and the nation was divided then, too, but I don't think we were as partisan. We didn't have as much partisan politics back then. Uh, we, yeah, we Well, had, it wasn't. The, the, the hatred wasn't there like it is now. No, it's really anyway. bad. I, I would sure love to see us get back together, but how the hell do we go there? How do we go from where we are? To, oh, I, I don't know. That's a different... Uh, we, we'd have to stay on for two hours just to start. <laughs> uh, probably 200 hours, and we wouldn't accomplish it. Better you should spend your time studying up on the XFL. Okay. Well, I'm, I just talked to you. You've already done that. You're, you're pretty, you're very I, up I've on got, it. I'm, I'm going to give out two picks on uh, our service. Okay. All right. Well, Hank, have a great weekend. All the, all the luck, and um, good luck with that, uh, that show on the... Uh, on the horses that you have coming up. Have a good one. Well, we won't know that result for a while, but we've got results coming up on the XFL this weekend. And, and believe me, if you give out picks, I'll bet them. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Hank. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. Hank is... Um, Hank, Hank may never sleep. I don't know. He just he just keeps studying and studying. He knows a lot of stuff about a lot of things, and he's very sharp. Um, we just talked about basketball, football, the XFL, horses. I mean, we, wow. Uh, great listen. Make sure you come back each and every uh, day for what we have on the website, jimfeist.com, our plays, our picks, our opinions. We don't get into politics, but we did a little bit today. Hank brought it up, and I'd love to see our nation come together. I, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent. It doesn't matter to me. Just uh, I would sure like to get us back to being one nation with one direction. Now, we can't always have one direction, but we're going to have, you know, but all the hatred that Hank brought up, I would sure like us to soften that up a little bit. and uh, Death threats and all that other stuff that you read that's going on, it's just not right. Um, you know, I'm not taking a political side. This isn't a political comment. I just like to see us be uh, more patriotic and 
and respect the flag and and um, and what we are about. We're not going to we're not going to survive uh, as a divided nation. Let's face that. And if you're out there listening, and if you're on one side or the other, I, I don't care. But we should we should try to get together and say, hey, a divided nation is going to fall, and so this can get a lot worse than what it is right now. We need to come together. We need to soften the rhetoric, and, and we need to we need to realize that diverse opinions are good. Um, I'm not saying who's right or wrong, but. We just need to realize that if we divide this nation any more than it is today, it's going to get ugly. We have to stop it. Anyway, I, I don't mean to get political. It really isn't political. It's really uh, nation building. I, I, I don't try to take sides. It's just, um, let's get it together. Have a good one.